So polynomial functions are continuous graphs. So what we're going to do to sketch, it's not going to be very accurate, accurate graphs, we're just more sketching. To sketch, we are going to use a couple of things. The first thing we're going to consider is the end behavior. And there are certain things that determine, what's up? Pencil? Yeah, you could use a pencil. Okay, there's things that determine the end behavior. The uh, exponent of the highest term, we're going to look to see if it's even or odd. And also the leading coefficient we're going to look to see if it's positive or negative. The zeros help us get a good sketch. Okay, let's talk about end behavior now. So when the degree of the polynomial is even, and also leading coefficient is positive. I call this a bounce. And an example of that would be y equals x squared. So now the degree of your polynomial is your highest exponent. Our highest exponent here is 2. Isn't that an even exponent? Okay. What's in front? A positive 1. So it's a positive and then an even exponent. So what happens is we are going to hit the root and bounce back up, which means if our root is zero, we hit it and then bounce back up. That's our double root there. Now let's say what happens if the degree of the polynomial is even and the leading coefficient is negative. Oh, sorry. One more thing with the even positive. Do you guys remember quadrants? This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Right. For even and positive, you're going to start in quadrant two and you're going to end in quadrant one. So you start quadrant two, you end quadrant one, and you bounce back up or back down, depending on where you're starting.
All right, so now let's say if the degree of the polynomial is even and the leading coefficient is negative. So an example would be y equals negative x squared. So it's still a bounce. It's still a bounce. But this time, which quadrant are we starting in? This time we're starting in quadrant three and we are ending in quadrant four. Still a bounce. So now we talked about when the degree is positive. Now let's talk about when the degree of the polynomial is, um, sorry, odd. Degree of the polynomial is odd. So we're going to say degree of polynomial is odd. and the leading coefficient is positive. And the example we're going to use is y equals x. Doesn't this have an exponent of 1, which is odd, and the leading coefficient is positive? So this will look like, in our quadrants, we are quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So we are going to start in quadrant three and we're going to end in quadrant one. And um, I say this is straight through the point, straight through. The zero. What's up, Leah? Oh, I was just asking if it had like a name. Okay. Okay, and our other scenario is going to be the degree of the polynomial. Is odd, but the leading coefficient is negative. And my example here would be y equals negative x. So for this, we have our quadrants, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. And we are going to start in quadrant 2 and we're going to end in quadrant four. And this is still a straight through the zero. And now these rules apply for even more complicated polynomials. These rules apply for even more complicated polynomials. Um, some teachers make you 
plot a few extra points, I don't. I don't think that's necessary. You get the general gist. This is not going to be completely accurate no matter what. So those few extra points is going to do nothing for you. So as long as we get the general shape of how it's supposed to look, I'm happy with that. So let's do some problems. Is anybody still copying? Okay. So let's do some examples. So I want us to sketch. So notice I'm not saying graph, I'm saying sketch. Sometimes it will say graph, even though it's still just a sketch. It's not completely accurate. This is just a general idea of what this would look like. Say I have P of X is equal to X plus 3 to the second times X minus 1 to the fifth times X plus 1 to the second. Okay. You might be thinking the highest degree is 5, but it's not. Why? Why is the highest degree not 5? David? Because these all get multiplied together, right? So the highest degree of the first one is an x squared. Do we agree? The highest degree of the second one is an x to the fifth. The highest degree of the last one is x to the second. But isn't it then going to be x to the second times x to the fifth times x to the second? So what's the degree of this? You got it. The degree is going to be x to the second times x to the fifth times x to the second. So the degree is? x to the ninth. So the degree of this polynomial is 9. Is 9 even or odd? Odd. All right, so the degree is odd. My leading coefficient, wouldn't it my leading coefficient be this times this times this? But aren't they all positive ones? So positive 1 times positive 1 times positive 1 is still positive. So our degree is odd. Our leading coefficient is positive. So let's go back. What happens when we're odd and positive? Where are we starting? Where are we ending? Start at 3 and end in 1. So when we're odd and positive, we start 3, we end 1. So go down here. I'm just going to put start, end. The next thing you want to do is you want to identify your zeros. The next thing you want to do is identify your zeros. Are we ready to do that? How are we going to identify our zeros? We're going to take each of these factors and set them equal to zero. So we're going to have an x plus 3 squared equals zero. But now, even with the zeros, I'm going to look at the exponent. When the exponent was even, I said it was a bounce. So this is going to be a bounce. Where is this going to be a bounce? This is going to be a bounce where x plus 3 equals 0. So that's going to be a bounce at negative 3. All right, now let's go to the next one. We have x minus 5. Oops, sorry, x minus 1 to the fifth power equals 0. So now I'm going to look at that exponent. And that exponent is odd. 
so that means it's going to be a straight through. Where is it going to be a straight through? When x minus 1 equals 0, which is x equals 1. And the next one is x plus 1 squared equals 0. So once again, what's the exponent on this, even or odd? Even. So is that a bounce or a straight through? This is a bounce. And where are we going to bounce when x plus 1 equals 0, which is x equals negative 1? All right, once we get all of our zeros, what we're going to do is we're going to plot all of our zeros. We're going to plot them all. So I have x equals negative 3. I have x equals negative 1. I'm actually going to spread these out a little bit more. So I have x equals negative 3, I have x equals negative 1, and I have x equals positive 1. Now, based on our bounce, our straight through, this is what we're going to do. So do we all agree we have to start our graph in this quadrant? So we're going furthest left first since we're starting in this quadrant. So my first one was x equals negative 3. But now x equals negative 3, wasn't that a bounce? So what's going to happen? I'm going to start from sort of negative infinity. Then I'm going to go up to negative 3. Am I going to go through it? No, I have to bounce back down. So we're going to go up, hit it, bounce back down. Now we're moving to the right. So now we're going down to, now we're going to not x equals 1. What's the next one? x equals negative 1. So now we look. Wasn't negative 1 also a bounce? So what's going to happen is we're going down, but what do I have to do? I have to turn back, right, to hit that negative 1. You make all your turns curved, never Vs, because Vs are absolute value, right? We make all our turns curved. So we're going to go down. We're going to come back up. We're going to hit that negative 1. And what am I going to do? Bounce back down. Okay, then we're going to hit our final zero. Our final zero is x equals 1. But because it was an odd exponent, what are we going to do? Go straight through. So I'm going to curve back up and go straight through. Leah, what's up? No. No. That's what I was saying. It doesn't matter when you start going back up again. These are all just general gists of what's happening. Okay, let's try another one. So again, I want us to sketch the graph of negative 2x to the fourth plus 2x cubed. Okay, so we're going to talk about the end behavior. And essentially what we're talking about for the end behavior we're looking at the degree of the whole polynomial and the leading coefficient. So you tell me, what is the degree of the whole polynomial? The highest degree, which is? Four. Is that even or odd? Even. So the degree of our polynomial is even. And then my leading coefficient, do we all agree that's a negative two? So I don't really care about the two, but I do care that it is negative. 
So it's even and negative. So what are we going to do? Go back, see our little cheat sheet that we won't have on the test. And I say, okay, well, if our leading coefficient is even and negative, this is eating even and positive. This is even and negative. Where am I starting? Where am I ending? Start quadrant three and quadrant four. So start end. We could put that little note for ourselves. Start end. But now in order to sketch this, what do I need to find? The zeros. We need to find the zeros. So I'm going to take negative 2x to the fourth plus 2x to the third. I'm going to set it equal to zero. And I'm going to try to factor this. The first part of factoring is to always pull out a... Yeah, GCF. You got it. We're going to pull out a GCF of... I'll pull out a negative 2x to the... Third. And then I'm going to be left with x minus 1. No more factoring to do. This is it. We're down to a degree of 1 in there. We're done factoring. So now what I do is I take each factor and I set it equal to 0. So this is negative 2x to the third equal to 0 and x minus 1 equal to 0. If I'm going too fast, just tell me to slow down. All right, when it comes to the zeros, aside from finding the zeros, which is very important, what else are we looking at? Aside from finding the zeros, what else are we looking at? Okay. Positive or negative, and uh, um, the degree being either or odd. Okay, not positive or negative. We don't care about positive or negative anymore because it's just going to be zeros, but we do care about the degrees. So this degree is? odd, right? To the third power is odd. What does odd tell us we're going to do through that zero? Straight through. And where are we going to go straight through when negative 2x cubed equals zero? Divide by negative 2. What are we going to get? x is equal to zero. So we're going to go straight through at x equals zero. All right, what about this next one? What's the degree of this next one? It's a degree of? One, which is odd. Very good. This degree is odd. So because it's odd, again, we're going straight through. So now we're going to go straight through at x minus 1 equals 0, where x equals 1. Are we ready to sketch? So we have a 0 at 0, and we have a 0 at, let's call this one right here. Okay, now we said we were starting in quadrant 3, and we were ending in quadrant 4. So which 0 do I hit first? Zero. The 0, and I have to come from the left side, like the bottom left, right? And now when I hit that zero, am I going straight through or am I bouncing back down? Straight through. Straight through. So we're going to go hit that. We're going to go straight through. But then to turn to hit the other zero, what do I have to do? Curve it. And now when I hit the zero at one, do I go straight down or do I bounce back up? Straight down. We could have curved a little sooner than that, but it really doesn't matter. Like I said, all this doesn't matter. It's just a general gist of how it looks. We could probably finish this up, actually. I know. Sorry. Let's sketch... 2x squared times x squared plus 2x minus 15. Our degree is not 2. What's our degree? 4, good. Our degree is 4 because wouldn't we have to 
distribute that in. So a 2x squared times an x squared is x to the fourth. Either way, they both end up being what? Even, right? So when we talk about our end behavior, we're even. And then what else am I looking at for the end behavior? Even and positive. You got it. What do we do now? Oh, well, find out where we end, start and end. Let's do that. Where, tell me, where do we start? Where do we end? Even and positive. You got it, two and one. We're going to start at two. We're going to end in one. Now what do I do? So I know I'm starting at two. I'm ending in one. What do I have to do now? What's your name? Francesca. Francesca. Sure. Oh, the negative 15 is the constant term. The leading coefficient is the number in front of our biggest exponent. So this would have been 2x to the fourth is our biggest exponent, so it's a positive 2. All right, what do I do now? Our zeros. We have to find our zeros. Can I currently find zeros as it is right now? No. What do I have to do with the x squared plus 2x minus 15, Dylan? Factor. So we're at 2x squared, and then we're going to have x plus 5, x minus 3. And we set each of these equal to 0. So we know the first one will be x equals 0. What else do I have to look at aside from the, the actual 0? What else do I have to look at? Michael? The degree. the degree. And what is this degree telling us we're going to do? Bounce. This degree tells us we're going to bounce. Then we're going to do x plus 5 equals 0. So x will equal negative 5. What does this degree tell us we're going to do? Straight through. Straight through. And then we're going to have x minus 3 equals 0. x will equal 3. What is this telling us we're going to do? Straight through. All right, so we're at negative five. So we're at negative five, zero, and three. But look, guys, this time I'm not starting bottom left. This time, where am I starting? Top left. This time we're starting top left and we're ending top right. So instead of coming from below and hitting it, what am I doing? I'm coming from the top and hitting it. And my one on the top, uh, my negative five is straight through. So what does that mean? I come from the top, I hit it. I don't bounce back up. I go down. All right, so I hit the negative 5. Which one am I heading towards now? The 0. So what happens is I have to curve back up to hit 0. But when I hit 0, am I a bounce or a straight through? Yes. Bounce. So now I have to bounce back down. And then the last one we're hitting is 3, which is straight through. All right, one more and then we're done. So now it's going to be a little different. Now I'm going to ask us to write an equation. Of the seventh degree. That satisfies. The graph.
does the wire intercept have to do with it? Hmm? That's my little curveball I'm throwing at you. The y-intercept has something to do with it. It does. All right, but we're not going to worry about the y-intercept just yet. Are we ready to figure this out? So what I do for these is I actually go through, and anything that's a bounce, I just write even next to it. So do you see, going from left to right, my first zero is a bounce. So I write even. And then... We go through, what is this one going to be since it's straight through? It's odd. I don't care about the y-intercept. Then Not yet, anyway. This next one is a bounce, so it is even. And the last one's a bounce, so it is even. Now, what degree did I ask for? Seven. So can I do two, four, six, one? That works, right? Two, four, six, one. So all of these are exponents of two, then one exponent of one. So now what we want to do is list out these zeros. I'm going to have x equals negative three. I have x equals negative one, x equals one, and x equals three. And guess what I'm going to do to these zeros? I'm going to turn them back into factors exactly I'm going to turn them back into factors so now the first one is becomes x plus 3 but remember what did I want it to be an even power so what should I put on top of this the quantity of x plus 3 squared now I'm going to move that negative 1 over so this becomes an x plus 1 and didn't we want this to be an odd power? So I could just leave it, right? And then the next one, we're going to have x minus 1. But that x minus 1, I needed an even power. So what should I put on here? A 2. And lastly, we're going to have an x minus 3. But again, because we need it to be an even power because it was a bounce, I'm going to put an exponent of 2. We're not done. How am I? Oh, goodness, we didn't finish this. Okay. Um, we know 0, 4 is a point. So if this whole thing is P of X, right? If that whole thing is P of X, this whole thing multiplied out is P of X, P of 0 has to equal... Four. So what am I going to do? There needs to be a leading coefficient here, which I'm going to call a. So a times x plus 3 squared times x plus 1 times x minus 1 squared times x minus 3 squared. Please pardon the interruption. Attention seniors, due to the weather forecast tomorrow, the senior sunrise will be held next Friday, October 27th. Thank you. All right, we need this to equal oops, 4. But we need this to equal 4 when x is what? When x is 0. So what am I going to do to all the zero, uh, the x's? Make them zeros. So I'm at 0 plus 3 squared plus 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 1 squared times 0 minus 3 squared. And now we simplify. That a stays in front. That's what we're solving for. So we're going to have a times 9 times 1 times 1 times 9. Oh, one second. 81a equals 4. So what does a equal? 4 over 81. All right. So our p of x is going to be 4 over 81 and then all the factors listed. Okay, we are done now. One second. Let's finish writing this.